Hey everyone, welcome back to 996 to how one of the best pieces of life advice is to compare yourself to who you were yesterday instead of someone else today. And that's what we do with these game progress game, 10 game reports. Every 10 games, we look back to see how the Kyries are doing, are they improving, what stats are concerning. And so for the first 10 games, we compare stats from last, the end of last year's stats and what they managed to do last, all of last season. So we'll get into it. The first 10 games, the Coyotes are 5, 4, and 1, which is good. It's not great and it's not bad. It's just good. It's good for 16th in the league. That's your average hockey team right here. The Arizona Coyotes now looking more localized. They are third in the Central Division, not even on the wild card spot. They are top three in the Central. They're one point above Winnipeg, who they play Saturday. So that's going to be a very important game. And maybe the Coyotes can get a stranglehold on that lead over Winnipeg. That's going to be a really tough game. Playoff atmosphere, which we haven't had in a really long time. Other teams in the Central, Minnesota, Nashville, St. Louis, they're below NHL 500, and they're still just trying to find their way, and uh, you know, hopefully they don't find their way too soon. But I'm really glad for the Coyotes going 5-4-1. and one. Last season, they are 3-6-1, and one. so just an improvement right there in terms of point percentage, in terms of wins, and... Um, I also got to say, four out of five of these losses have been one goal losses, except for that first game against the LA Kings. Every other game that they lost has only been by one goal. So to me, that shows, you know, either goaltending is really good, which it is. And also the Coyotes are just one shot away from these games. This record could be much better if they just maybe had some more luck or just tried a little bit harder, that one extra shot, one extra stride could have changed the game. I think the only really game that they didn't have any chance on, that they lost by one goal, was the Islanders game. They lost one nothing. I think they had like 17 shots in that game, and uh, they had no business only losing that game one nothing. So let's get into it. Goals for, goals against per game. This is what I've been saying for like two years since I started doing these 10 game progress reports. You gotta have your goals for per game above three, your goals against per game below three. And finally, the Coyotes have done it. 12th in the league in goals for per game at 3.3. Huge improvement, almost 0.6 goals more per game than last season. Goals against, almost one goal. Uh, difference from this season to last season, they are ninth in the league, only allowing 2.7 goals against Per game great numbers there the power play much to improve 23.81 percent it's good for top 10 in the league they're at 10th last year it started off really really well and then just nosedive the whole season the first 10 games last season they were third in the league on their power play so i think this time this will be more sustainable they look really dangerous on the power play especially logan cooley who's has you know six six out of his eight points on the power play penalty killing the only huge concern for me is a penalty killing this needs to be way way better uh even last year their their penalty kill was 10th in the league in the first 10 games and nosedive as well this season it's starting really low they got to raise that up it's been getting okay but they really got to harp and focus on the penalty kill it's 27th in the league which is really bad 72.22 percent save percentage incredible elite i mean i have nothing but good words to say about ingram and vamelka they are playing stellar it is becoming an elite tandem in the league they gotta you know keep this up be consistent i think 0.914 is a bit too high maybe it'll average out to 908 save percentage but really loving the goalies. I love how they compete with each other. I love how coaching the coaching staff is rotating them and not really giving one goalie uh, so many starts in a row. In a row, really good load management right there. Shooting percentage, it's up if you can believe it. The Coyotes under Andre Turney have always been a team that has really good shooting percentage. Usually, always usually always the top ten. Right now, they're 11th in the league at 11.1%. And the reason why I'm surprised by this is because 
I really want the Coyotes to start shooting more and averaging way more shots per game, which they are doing at 29.7 shots per game. They've always been dead last under, under Andre Tourney, so it's great to see that number skyrocket. And the fact that shooting percentage is increasing as well, I was worried that if they get more shots, the shooting percentage will go down and their efficiency will go down. But it's kind of like in lockstep where they're shooting more and they're maintaining that same shooting percentage, which is great to see, which is translating to more goals and obviously more goals per game. Face-off percentage, a little bit better. I, I would hope it would be above 50%, but it's at 48.6%. Face-off leaders, Bukestad at 53.3%. Kerfoot sometimes takes face-offs around 52%. Hayden's at 48%. Would love to see Hayden eclipse 50%. Cooley, 43.7%. That's really low. And McBain, 42%. So McBain's got to focus on some face-offs. He's our fourth-line centerman. And uh, some games, Andre Turney loves putting this fourth line on the ice. So please win face-offs if you're on the ice a lot. But McBain got a, an unsung hero. He's got six points in 10 games for a fourth-line center. Really good depth there. Hits per game is way down which I'm not too worried about as you get better, as you get more talent, as you start holding on to the puck more, having way more puck possession, more ozone time. Coyotes are one of the leading teams in offensive zone time. So that leads to way less hits and they're almost 10 hits per game less than they were last season. This just shows me the Coyotes are improving offensively. They're not gonna be that goon type team where they're losing a game and they just goon it up and play physical and just focus on that. They're going to start dictating the pace, dictating play, and uh, generating a lot more offense. And then fights, surprisingly, they have four fights in these 10 games. Last year, they had three fights in their first 10 games. I couldn't believe they counted that Sean Dursey two punches as a fight. I don't know. To me, it wasn't a fight, a bit of more of a retaliation, but they consider it a fight which brings them to four fights and which is fourth in the league. I expect the fighting number to m be in line with the hits per game and just go down, down, down as the season moves on. Um, the fights, O'Brien two fights, McBain and Sean Dursey. I feel like O'Brien lost both his fights. Maybe McBain's was a bit even and then Dursey, I wouldn't even call it a fight to be honest. But I expect that number to go down, especially that Josh Brown is rotating in and out of the lineup uh, with Travis Dermott. And I think Dermott's gonna win that job over Brown. But however, last night against Montreal, they went with 11-7, 11 forward, seven defensemen for the first time this season, I'm pretty sure. So maybe that's how Brown will come in. And I would like to see the 11-7 formation. I think, you know, Boyd is kind of running out of real estate here. And to pair Cooley with you know, different players throughout the game in different periods. You could put Keller, double shift Keller. Maybe if someone's having a good game, like McBain, have a Cooley, McBain, Carcone line. Just give Carcone, uh, sorry, give Cooley more chances to play with better players. And I think the 11 forwards, seven defensemen formation uh, solves that issue. Otherwise, he's playing with Travis Boyd and uh, Carcone. Not to be too hard on Carcone. We'll go into individual stats, the players. Schmaltz leads the way at a point per game pace, 10 points in 10 games. Last year in the first 10 games, Schmaltz wasn't even on the board because he was injured. So Schmaltz, for me, he just needs to not get injured. We're seeing probably his best hockey he's ever played. Him and Keller are, I say this all the time, they're just magic together. And they're really just getting better and better every season. Against Montreal, like Schmaltz and Keller just dance around the offensive zone and make plays. And the other teams have no idea what to do. Tyson Nash said it the best. They have like microphones in their ears or earbuds in their ears telegraphing where each other is. It's just really good chemistry. And uh, finally, the Coyotes are at a state in their rebuild or state of a hockey team where there's a lot of chemistry between players and they're making teams uh, pay for it. Keller, nine points in 10 games. Can't say any bad things about Keller's game. Cooley, eight points in 10 games. Like I said, six points have been on the power play, two points even strength. 
Cooley for me, yeah, a little bit of a power play merchant. He's getting most of his points in the power play, probably because he's playing with Schmaltz and Keller on that power play number one. And if Cooley's playing with skilled guys who make skillful plays, I feel like he ghosts a bit in certain parts of the game, but then they'll just be plays that make you jump out of your seat and you're like, I can't believe he just made that play. He does little small things so skillfully that you really only notice on slow-mo replays and you're like, damn, that, that took a lot of skill either to receive that pass, the way he scored his first NHL goal, Steve Peters really broke it down really well where he like drops his shoulder, uses his leg to prevent the defenseman from swiping the puck out of his stick and then uses his momentum to fake the shot and go against the grain as opposed to shooting along with his momentum against the goalie. Really just skill, high IQ plays that really go unnoticed unless you really pay attention. Uh, I think Cooley just needs better line mates, five on five. Not to say he deserves to be with Keller and Schmaltz. I think losing Zucker really hurt uh, Cooley's development because I think Zucker was starting to become a really good player with Cooley. The reason why I wouldn't put Cooley with Keller and Schmaltz, Hayden's got a job and he does the job really well. Hayden's job is not to get points. His job is to go in the dirty areas, retrieve pucks, and stand in front of the net. And that is it. That is all Hayden's job. Let Schmaltz and Keller do their thing, pass it, dominate the ozone. You're standing in front of the net causing havoc and making the goalie's life a living hell. If you have Cooley there, Cooley's not going to the front of the net. He's not going to retrieve pucks in dirty areas. You're going to have three guys who want to touch and hold on to the puck. It only works on the power play. It's not really going to work five on five. But, you know, if they decide to do it in the next 10 games and it works, then then I'm wrong, but I don't think it will work. Michelli, eight points in 10 games. He started off slow in the first two or three games, but really got it going after that St. Louis game. He's starting to have more confidence, make plays, skate on his edges. That play with him and Krause against Montreal where Krause got his third of the year. Incredible IQ and playmaking IQ just to, to re, to Krause and Michelli, they were the only players on that play. Michelli was near the blue line, does like a tic-tac-toe with Kraus, and then Kraus just goes to an empty area. Michelli goes down the wall, shoots it across the ice, finds Kraus, who one-times it. The chemistry there is starting to build. Kraus is getting more confident. He finally, you know, he's only one goal off the team lead of four goals. Kraus has three goals, and he went like six games with no goals. So great to see another duo of chemistry there. And Sean Dursey, our best defenseman this year, seven points in 10 games. I love Dursey's game. I'm giving him an A+. Plus. This is like new players, my grades for them. Uh, I think Dursey's been the best acquisition. The fact that we only got him for a second round pick is incredible. He's going to eclipse his career year totals by a long margin. Just uh, even, you know, people were saying he's terrible def defensively. He takes a lot of risks. He leads the team in plus minus at plus eight. I know everyone hates plus minus stats, but the fact that people said he's going to be a liability defensively, I don't see it. I rarely see him make a mistake. I, I think he's really good. You know, he, he skates back hard. If he finds himself out of position, he'll skate really hard to go back into position. And the coaches love him. They rely on him and they trust him because he leads the team in time on ice as well. Just loving Sean Dursey, a great power play quarterback as well. Maybe we need another one for power play number two. Not sure if Valimaki is doing a, a great job on power play number two. Goalies, Vimalka, two, three, and one. 916 save percentage, 275 goals against average. Good numbers. You want that win-loss record to be in line with Ingram, who's three and one. 919 save percentage, and a 239 goals against average. I love Ingram. I like him more than Vimelka. Not saying you have to as well. I just feel like Ingram is so unfazed all 60 minutes of a game. It's rare he has a terrible game. I think he got pulled maybe in one of those LA games. So not as rare. One in 10 games. But I just love the way he plays. His mindset. His purposeful movements. He doesn't move around too much. He's not as chaotic as Vimelka. Uh, which some people rather like a chaotic goalie. But Ingram, to me, uh, this is I knew he was a good goalie since the moment we picked him up on waivers. He took a little bit of time last season, 
but uh, he's going to be a, a Coyotes goalie for a really, really long time. And then going back to the grades of our new acquisitions, didn't put Bukestad or Stetcher here because we already know who they are. Uh, Dursey, give him an A+. Plus. Cooley, give him a B+. Plus. Work on that 5-on-5. Five five. Play a full 60 minutes. Try not to ghost in games for long stretches of time. Dermott, I think, is a great defensive defenseman. I didn't know he was a defensive defenseman. I thought he was more offensive in Toronto. But uh, a great defensive defenseman, really taking that role, role away from Josh Brown. And he loves breaking up two-on-ones. He's one of the best players I've seen who could break up a two-on-one. He'll first go on the floor you know, and block the pass. And then if he notices the puck carrier going around him, he'll turn around with his stick and still get the puck off the player's stick. Really love Dermot there. Kerfoot, he's starting to get better. I liked his past three games. Give him a B minus because he took a while to get it going. But he's getting more comfortable. He's great on the penalty kill. He's great in these situations that the coaches need someone to trust. Very versatile, sneaky skill. I think he's just going to get better and better once he gets more comfortable with the team. Zucker, it's unfortunate he got injured. This is kind of unfair to him. He started to get it going. He scored goals in back-to-back -back games before getting injured. Dumba. A C minus. He leads the team in the worst plus minus. He's minus six. Again, plus minus, not the best stat. But I really only notice Dumba when it's a goal against, and I see where Dumba is on the ice, and he's totally out of position and didn't work hard enough to get back. So hopefully he plays better. Um, yeah, I'm pretty underwhelmed by Dumba, and I rather see him do more positive things and have more positive impact, maybe offensively. Maybe work his way to take that power play number two quarterback position and just stop being on the wrong side of goals and be totally out of position where it's obvious to me like, hey, on this replay, Dumba, Dumba's nowhere near where he should be. So that's it. A great first 10 games. You got to keep it rolling. If they keep this cons consistently going moving forward, I think they have a really good chance at the playoffs. Not uh, not top three in their division, but they could have a chance for a wild card spot. But I'm keeping my expectations where they were before the season. Fifth in the Central. Just miss out on the playoffs. I'll still be happy. I like the way they're working. Every game they're in it, except for that first LA game. And uh, they're becoming more dangerous. And losing Zucker hurts because it that's a big depth piece that could scare some teams. But uh, they just got to keep it rolling. It was scary. Not scary, but it wasn't scary in the Chicago game. But in the Anaheim game, you know, the top line going back-to-back -back games with no points. Even though I thought they played really well against Anaheim, it was a bit concerning. But that those concerns completely wiped away in that Montreal game. I want to give credits and shout-outs to Carconi, who's got six points in nine games. And McBain, who's got six points in 10 games. Carconi and McBain tied for the lead league in goals with four. So that's Schmaltz, Keller, Dersey, McBain, and Carconi, who are all tied for the lead, team lead in goals. So great for them. Uh, just more sign of such great depth with guys like Carconi and McBain being in the tied for team lead in goals. So that's it for me. Thanks for watching. If you'd like what you see, spread the word. And as always, thank you for your support.